So my name is Thomas Molyneux. I'm a certified life coach from England. And over the last year, I've spent a lot of time working on an online course, putting together as much information and research as possible to help people quit porn. Now I have been on this journey, trying to quit porn for over eight years. And so it's taken me a while. It might seem like a small thing, you know, touching your penis and looking at pictures or videos or not doing that. But this has been a big part of my life. And so I'm gonna share what I've learned over the last eight years with yourself. So the starting place for me was struggling with erectile dysfunction. Essentially, I had some nerves, a bit of anxiety, and due to looking at porn so often in the past, that first time for me, when I was about to have sex, I did not get erect. And so, you know, I could make all the jokes in the world about it, but the reality is that was due to how I'd been, I'd been raised in a society by, by a world where we have, you know, porn and sexual content everywhere. And it's basically the norm to look at that content. Now, in my opinion, I think it can be really harmful to the brain and there's not enough research out there on this topic just yet. But what I will do is share with you now how you can quit porn for good. And this is just based off my own personal experience, but also I suppose there's a lot of research and a lot of reading and a lot of meditation as well. So what I would say is during that eight years, there was a lot of ups and downs for me. I kind of, I'd kind of base my self-worth and my confidence on how well I was doing in terms of NoFap. So this streak, you know, often I'd get onto quite a good streak and I'd be feeling good, a lot of confidence. And then I'd have a setback and back down onto day zero, I'd feel pretty awful, a lot of tiredness, anxiety, frustration with myself. There was this internal battle. And so my mental health and just my overall confidence was very up and down. Overall, I never gave up, I never quit. And I do think I've made quite a lot of progress in my life as a whole over the last eight years. It's quite a long time, but just never giving up and sticking to the process of continually learning and trying to improve myself has helped a huge amount. So the first thing I would say, my first tip would be, <laughs> and I, I, I love saying this because it's something that everyone should know. I think if I had like one aim in life right now, it would be to get this message out there to as many people as possible. Because the number one thing for me is that there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you for struggling to quit porn. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with me either. But I'd internalized a lot of those failures through having setback after setback after setback. I kind of started to think in my head, uh, is there something wrong with me here? Why can't I quit? I have this problem. And so I started to focus more and more on the failures and sort of forgot at times who I really was deep down. And the thing is, this problem of porn isn't something you're born with. It's a problem that you, that you have because unfortunately, as I say, we live in a society where this is ubiquitous. It's everywhere online nowadays on social media and there's not, re and there's not enough research on this yet um, to, to say how harmful it is. In my opinion, this is very much like how how smoking was maybe 50 years ago. It's just something that everyone does, but we don't know yet how it can be so harmful. So that's the first thing is just to realize that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. If so far you have struggled to quit, the only reason you would have struggled to quit so far is because you have not been taught how, you've not had enough practice of quitting based on a strategy that actually does work. Now, the second thing on those sort of, on, the, on, on those lines of, having a strategy, having a process. Well, what we want to do is actually start to start to deal with this problem in a totally different way where we don't use willpower and we don't focus on the cravings too much, although they are important and I'll talk about that in a moment. What we want to do is really focus on the cues because if we have a look at James Clear's habit loop, it goes like this, cue, craving, response, reward. That reward then results in further cues and in terms of the brain and porn, 
that may be due to the accumulation of delta phos b a transcription factor and we could get really scientific but essentially it's just how our brain is conditioned if we've had a huge evolutionary reward in the past then we're obviously going to have certain cravings that are connected to the cues which led to the cravings and the actual huge evolutionary reward in the past i hope that makes sense but just a sort of simple version of that like let's say you go on a tiktok you get on tiktok one day and you end up getting turned on by some sexual content because that platform's full of sexual content you end up having a wank masturbating you have an orgasm and at the end of that what's happened is your brain has slightly rewired to say okay well tiktok that can lead to orgasm that's this huge evolutionary reward that in the past our ancestors would have kept on reproducing and actually having children from so let's value that really highly let's you know get really excited if we go on tiktok again in the future so then after a few times you end up going on tiktok and your dopamine just as blasted because you've got this excitement this anticipation of this huge reward dopamine is all about anticipation desire craving the wanting and so you're obviously going to experience a lot of craving in that moment so my second tip overall what i've learned is to really try and limit our physical cues the cues that in the past have led to us looking at porn another one maybe if you're laying in bed well, if you've laid in bed and that's the place where you tend to uh, masturbate, obviously you want to start considering what are you actually laying in bed for? Is it to scroll your phone on social media or are you going to start just using your bed for sleep and nothing else? And that would be my, my recommendation is to just apply a one space, one use strategy. I talk about that more in my online course. So the third thing that I've learned is along these lines of the habit loop and the cue craving response reward, we also have emotional cues which lead to really intense cravings. You're stressed out at work. Well, what happens is, I don't know, maybe one time you go and masturbate and get this huge evolutionary reward. Then after a few times of doing that, eventually your brain is going to rewire to associate stress with an orgasm and stress with porn and so what's going to happen is you're going to get cravings when you feel stressed at work and so that is true for any any emotion essentially especially things like stress though because it sort of weakens the prefrontal cortex and sort of turns that off temporarily um, but yeah stress shame often for me in the past it would also be loneliness maybe anxiety and so these really heavy emotions what can happen over time is due to us wanting to sort of protect ourselves we can form form these coping mechanisms where we end up going and looking at porn and escaping whenever we feel those really intense emotions so what we want to do is become more and more aware of those feelings understand that we're feeling them first of all and actually label them so instead of just being like i'm in a bad mood and you suddenly automatically go and scroll on tiktok or whatever other platform instead of doing that you go oh actually i feel really really quite alone right now um, i'm lonely well what can i do and you go and proactively meet your needs maybe you go call a friend or meet up with somebody or if you can't do that if there is no solution to your problem in that given moment that's okay as well it's just learning to accept that so number four would be identifying the root cause of your issue because looking at porn is only ever a symptom. It's not the actual root cause of your, of your problem. It's not the main thing going on in your life. Like for me, I realized quite a while ago now that the root cause for me was, was really dealing with my mum's cancer. You know, that's not an easy thing to deal with. Um, she got diagnosed when I was only 12. And so growing up, that was a big part of my life especially the feelings of powerlessness around that. As a kid, you don't have any power when, you know, you're 12 years old and your mum's being told she might die soon. It's a, it's a horrible situation. And so identifying that was really useful. But what I would say is that I still wasn't able to quit porn fully by just realizing that that was like the main sort of problem in my life. What I had to then do was the hard part. And the hard part is dealing with the emotions associated with the root cause. So that for me was the powerlessness. That for me was often loneliness, anxiety, and fear. Fear that my mom would ultimately die. 
And then also other feelings like shame, like I hadn't done enough, like I wasn't good enough, like, you know, maybe it was my fault in some way or, you know, really, really just wanted to protect my mum and, and keep her alive somehow. So, so many things there. And it was really dealing with all those emotions associated with the root cause, which, um, which was a game changer for me. Uh, learning to both accept them, realise that they're temporary, but then also if there were any problems I actually could uh, solutionize and, and actually figure out a way of getting around them is going and taking the action and solving those problems. Number six, I would say is like changing your sort of mindset, your perspective on, on life as a whole in terms of like how difficult it is. And I started doing volunteering work like about a year ago. I do volunteering work for the Samaritans here in England. And I talk to people who have had the most horrendous lives. Often, often they're in a really bad way mentally when they're calling us. Um, not always, but, but sometimes they're suicidal as well. And some of the stories I've heard over the last year have been absolutely brutal, just really horrendous life stories. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to get into them in this video, but that's deepened my understanding of how humans do struggle. And um, a lot of people go through trauma. A lot of people have awful upbringings and there's a lot of injustice in the world. All of those things can contribute to somebody wanting to escape and, you know, do that with with a way that is, is so easy. It's free, it's ubiquitous, it's absolutely everywhere. Pornography is and there's a very low perceived cost by the rest of society because most people aren't acknowledging this as a serious issue. And so what I would say about number Number six on this list is just to accept that actually, yeah, life isn't always fair. It can be hard and you are going to experience some pain and some struggle on this journey. And it, I guess it doesn't have to be a struggle, but you are going to experience discomfort. And if you can't handle discomfort, then you're probably not going to be able to, to seriously quit porn for good. That is what I would say. Um, you have to be prepared for discomfort. And I remember when I was in Portugal living there, I was having such an amazing time. This was a few years ago. I had a different online business that was quite successful. The sun's out, it was summer, playing football, making friends, just having an amazing time in Portugal. And I was doing so well in terms of quitting porn and no fab. I it was on like a really long streak. And then one day, like some friends went out and I felt really lonely. Some old feelings came up and I ended up having a setback. And I think looking back, that really, really made me realize that actually, yeah, focusing on what you do want and not on what you don't want, it does work. And, you know, just pursuing a great life, that's a huge part of this journey. But at the same time, if you haven't yet learned how to deal with your emotions, how to regulate yourself properly, you're still going to have setbacks and be unable to quit porn because that is fundamental and you can't outrun negative emotions at one point you have to just realize that they are going to come it's part of the human experience and that's not a bad thing we can avoid them as much as possible by pursuing a better life and growing and developing and really diving into personal development to make our lives better but at the same time they are going to come no matter what and that's the same for sexual urges as well so number seven as i was just saying there is focus on what you do want not on what you don't want so yeah we are going to have to embrace some negative emotions from time to time or at least accept them but with that being said we can still focus on what we actually want in life and not on what we don't want in the past i focused way too much on trying to quit porn but imagine you have a footballer and they're taking a penalty um if they're just focusing in their head like don't miss don't miss don't miss chances are they're going to scat it like they're going to miss you know if, if you're focusing on scoring a goal you're way more likely to score and I've actually read some studies in the past that prove that as well. So you really do want to just focus your attention on what you actually want in life instead of the things that you don't want. The other thing to just back up this point is imagine you have someone who's dead. Well, they can literally achieve whatever no fat streak they like because they're dead. So you need to acknowledge that you have this amazing opportunity to actually improve your life and do things with it and that's here right now and so don't just focus on trying to quit porn because that's not really a goal a dead person is achieving that every single day but you have the opportunity to go and make something of your life and then finally point number eight self-compassion 
curiosity just see everything as data you know don't beat yourself up too much if you have a setback just learn from it just keep on learning be curious just see yourself from a bit of a distance you know if you have a setback don't get overwhelmed and swept away by shame and negative emotions there's absolutely nothing wrong with you there's just something wrong with your process or your system learn from it adapt move on be flexible in your thinking and success will be yours so i hope this video has helped you my online course is out right now go to www.finallyquitporn.com and i will see you shortly also please do like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video let me know about your experience on nofap in the comments and i genuinely do wish you the best of luck on quitting porn this is a problem which we've had to face just because of how society is set up and that is unfair in my opinion but you know what there's a lot of personal growth to be had here and mastering your emotions is something which is just absolutely unbelievable so there's a lot to get excited about as well there's a great opportunity here to grow so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video